beginning with an aspiration. May there be wisdom and compassion for the sake of us and all beings. Settling into a relaxed yet alert meditation posture, we'll go through a pre-flight safety check, as I sometimes tongue-in-cheek call it when I was a child, right through my life, actually. My father was a float plane pilot, both privately and professionally, for a period of time. And so I grew up with a, a float plane, a Beaver float plane, and a Cessna float plane, uh, seaplane, as our second car. And my dad was a, is a fairly... Um, type A person, very busy, runs through, does a lot quickly. And the one time I saw him slow, slow down and be what we would call mindful now was when we were about to go for a flight and he would do his careful pre-flight safety check. And it really struck me as a child, the meticulousness and the care and the attention he paid to what he was doing. And so I sometimes think of that as a great analogy for us preparing for meditation. Let's do our pre-flight safety check. Many of you are very familiar with these five steps. Uh, before we begin to meditate, the first is to imagine that a rope or a string drops down from the ceiling, it tabs into the tip top crown of our head, and it and someone winches us upward. And I want us all to actually stretch upward as though we are literally being pulled up very gently from the crown of our head. So we stretch up, we stretch up, I'm becoming two to four to five centimeters taller right now, and then gently relax back down. Next, uh, checking with the shoulders, gently raising the shoulders, just two centimeters maybe, gently rolling them back, not forceful, this isn't a stretch, it's an invitation to relaxation, and then allow the shoulders to melt back down. Gently raising the shoulders, gently rolling back and allowing them to melt back down. And a third time, gently rising, gently rolling, gently floating back down. And check in with the chin. You can place your thumb under the chin. Uh, don't uh, push on the chin at all. You're just placing the thumb there and then you're pushing down gently with the chin upon the thumb, which can stretch out and realign the neck and remind the neck so that you're not jutting your chin out or tucking your chin too far back in, both of which put strain on the neck. I've got my leg up because it's a little tender today, so uh, I'm in a little bit of a funny posture, so that's why. So we stretch up, we correct and invite shoulders to let go, which opens the heart center. Sometimes we feel quite vulnerable, a bit emotional, a bit weepy when we do that shoulder opening because it opens the heart. Correcting, checking in with the neck, and then moving to the belly, and you saw me perhaps do some rustling down here. I have sort of yoga pants on with an elastic band that stretches across about the belly button area. So I pulled them down so the elastic is below the curve of the fall of the belly. No matter how thin or large you are, your belly has uh, the ability to open up, uh, to become full and round. So unsnap your jeans or, or snap trousers unless they're very loose and pull your waistbands down below the curve of your belly. So they're sort of where the top of your natural pubic hair would, would be. That's basically where you want to pull your pants down to so that the belly's unencumbered and it can fall open like a pot. There's all sorts of reasons meditatively why that's important. It's not a gimmick. I strongly encourage you to follow that instruction. It will help. And then let all that go. Let all that go. And simply settle in to the body, to the breath. So breathing, allowing the body to breathe, allowing the body to be breathed. We're not having to remember to breathe. We're not having to do anything about it. This is not an efforting. This is not a chore. The body knows how to breathe. It does a very good job of it or we'd be dead. So just letting the body breathe, non-interfering mind. Don't jump in there and mess about and try to fix anything. Just be, just be breathing. And I invite you for this meditation, likely you'll benefit if you close your eyes. You're welcome to work eyes open, soft, alert gaze. 
And just begin to sink in to the body breathing. Reminding yourself you've got nowhere to go right now, nowhere you need to be, nothing you need to do. You may have a list as long as your arm. So when competing demands interfere our mental list, perhaps our restless children or pets, uh, a, a bing on the uh, dryer asking us to come fold the clothes, it's really not, by the way, it's simply the arising and passing of a bing. We ascribe stories to it. Do your best with gentle kindness to be here now. Hmm. Just be breathing. No other instructions at this moment, just being, breathing, that's all. So I invite you to close your eyes and However your body is now arranged, however you're sitting on your cushion, a bench, a chair, the couch, you may even be laying down for this particular meditation. It might be better if you sit up, but uh, also be kind to your body. So if laying down is really what the body needs, which is different than what the body wants, then uh, certainly stay with that. And I'd like you to imagine that above the crown of your head, so floating in space above your head, floating above your head, gosh, if I didn't have a fractured ankle, I'd go get a vase. But imagine floating above your head is a beautiful crystal vase of any size, whatever your imagination comes up with. Maybe it's as giant as a house, maybe it's as small as a thimble, maybe it's yay big size of one that would fit flowers. Imagine floating above the crown of your head, a crystal or glass see-through vase, a clear crystal or clear glass vase. And this is floating in space above the crown of your head. And then hopefully many of us have had a chance to see the full moon at times over the last few days. I think it was technically full on Friday evening. It's been quite clear here on the South Island, maybe not so much tonight. And I hope you saw the full moon at some point. And if not, you know how to imagine a full moon. So floating in space above the crown of your head is a crystal vase. And then up above, not way up in the sky, but as though the moon has come down into your ceiling. Between the vase and your ceiling is a full moon. Maybe the size of a basketball, maybe larger. Full moon. Empty crystal vase. And you sitting as you are. And I invite you to imagine that the moon begins to pour down moonlight into the crystal vase. Moonlight that becomes like the most beautiful ambrosial liquid moonlight. It has the qualities of liquid like a waterfall and the sparklingness of moonlight. And it begins to rain down from the full moon into the vase, radiant, healing, purifying light.
And this light, this liquid moonshine, so to speak, of the most enlightened kind, not the other kind, starts to fill the crystal vase bit by bit. This does not have to follow the laws of science. So maybe, although it's pouring out of the moon like a giant waterfall, a giant rainfall, of liquid ambrosial milky white radiant liquid moonlight it may fill the vase in space over the crown of your head very slowly little by little this purifying light the light of loving kindness the light of compassion the light of wisdom filling the vase bit by bit, by bit, warm and healing and nurturing the purifying light of awakening. And it continues to fill the vase bit by bit. until it's entirely full. It's entirely full with the liquid moonshine, liquid awakening, sparkling rainbow white light, like how light reflects off a beautiful diamond. And this vase becomes so full of the light of awakening, the light of loving kindness, the light of compassion, that that water, that light starts to overflow and it begins to run down like rainfall, like snowflakes, and it begins to enter the crown of our heads. So imagine this vase in space above your head, overflowing with luminous radiant light and liquid that is flowing down and into the tip top crown of your head. It may help to imagine that there's a cork on the top of your head that you pluck out and this beautiful liquid healing light enters your body and begins to flood through your body, heading downward from the crown of your head. Flooding through your body, healing your body, nurturing your body, flowing through your body, flowing through your limbs, flowing through your torso, flowing through your buttocks and your pelvic bowl, flowing down your legs and flowing out the soles of your feet. It feels warm, it feels nurturing, it feels healing, it feels glorious. And you can fake it till you make it. Just imagine, pretend as best you can, this feeling of liquid illumination flooding in from the moon to the vase, filling the vase, the vase overfilling and raining down blessings that are entering the crown of your head and flowing down your body. And they begin this rain of blessings to dissolve any of the troubles in your body, in your mind, in your life. I'm talking about obstacles. I'm talking about difficult emotions. I'm talking about tricky relationships with others. I'm talking about financial difficulties, financial worries. I'm talking about financial and um, life dilemmas. I'm talking about medical illness, physical pain, aging. I'm talking about heartbreak. I'm talking about pesky ideas that won't leave you alone. Any difficulties, any traumas, any obstacles, any negativities, any challenges. We've all got laundry lists of them that are in our lives, in our minds, even in our past, but don't feel fully resolved or cleared. Imagine those like chunks of dirt in your body, chunks of dirt, chunks of coal, chunks of mud, and this warm healing light of awareness of awakening is flooding from your crown through your body. And much like 
liquid plumber in those old commercials where they pour the liquid plumber. It might have been Drano, but in the commercial I recall, there was a glass pipe and it ran down and it curved up in a U-curve and down again. And there was a big clog. It was a representation. It was an artist's rendering and they poured the liquid plumber in the pipe and it began to move through the pipe and it hit the clog and it started to dissolve the clog bit by bit. And in the animation, little pieces of that black clog would break off and flush down the pipe. And then more little pieces of dark dirt and clog would break off and flush down the pipe. And eventually the warm liquid light represented by liquid plumber dissolved the clog and the whole clog whooshed through the pipe and the raining water moved through the pipe and the pipe was left sparkling and clear. That's the imagery. That's the sensation. That's the imagination that we're going for. So refreshing the visualization of a full moon floating above your head between you and the ceiling. Under that and floating maybe mm, a few inches, six inches, a foot above your head is a crystal clear vase. The moonlight fills the vase. The vase overflows. The moonlight rains down in a rain of healing blessings that enter the crown of your head. And this white light, this liquid healing, this light of loving kindness, compassion, and purification moves down through your body, melting and loosening the clogs, the clogs of anger, the clogs of fear, the clogs of alienation, the clogs of depression, the clogs of broken love affairs, the clogs of dying pets, the clogs of COVID-19, the fears of the future, the financial worries, the overwork, the tired, sore bodies. Bit by bit, this liquid healing, this light of awakening dissolves and flushes all of these down our body and they exit the soles of our feet in the form of dirt and mud and black smoke and these move through the floor and the foundation into mother earth and she accepts with joy the beauty of the mud she absorbs it into herself and she turns it into nutrients for living being this is the practice this is the visualization and we'll work with that in silence for a period of time about five or ten minutes refreshing the imagery the moon the vase the vase filling it overflowing the beautiful light moving through our body loosening our clogs they flush out the soles of our feet and as you work with this visualization meditation each successive flush of the body with the healing purifying light takes more and more of the gunk out of us so what comes out of our feet is at first black and mucky and dark and then it gradually becomes a little less dark and mucky a little more light colored fluid and then a little less dark until it's almost just like dirty water instead of mud. And then as we continue the visualization, I want you to pretend, imagine, or experience that what eventually starts coming out of the soles of your feet is just as pure, just as crystalline, just as radiant, just as white as what is entering the crown of your head. And so we continue the practice. Now that the instructions have, I hope, been thoroughly offered, particularly for the many of you for whom this is all a new teaching. Purification and letting go, utilizing the white moonlight of awakening.
security in the crown of the head, moving through the body, melting all of our obstacles, and we leave our body through the soles of our feet. If the mind is distracted by sound or body sensation or thinking, redirect it, refresh the visualization of the moon, the vase, the snowfall, the rainfall, the waterfall of liquid light into the head, washing through and out the soles of your feet. And for the last few minutes of this meditation, really work with the feeling, the visualization, the imagination of this crystalline fluid, this beautiful moonlight entering the crown of your now crystally purified body, moving through your body and coming out the soles of your feet as liquid crystal 
light. In fact, in an instant, your body now turns into a beautiful, clear crystal sculpture in the exact shape and form of your physical body. A beautiful, radiant crystal sculpture of you with light entering the crown of your head and flooding through and exiting the soles of your feet. 